What is up and welcome back and today we have the Nike Air Zoom GT Cut 2 and GT stands for greater than so this basketball shoe is going to be a part of the greater than series. With that said in this video we're going to find out if this basketball shoe is right for your playstyle and that's a big if. So with that said let's begin with the review of this shoe. So after taking a close look there was something that surprised me that the base of the shoe is going to be very narrow going to be narrow along this area right here and it even has cutouts that go inward. We turn the shoe around. Hopefully you can see those with the camera. Not just that but the forefoot you're not gonna have nothing extra. Some shoes sometimes are a little bit wider in the forefoot and that helps out a whole lot with the shoe being more stable. Now in this type of shoe as you can tell you're gonna have nothing extra in the front then it's going to be very narrow with these cutouts. But that's going to mean you have to be a very balanced player. Have to know where your footwork is going. Because if you struggle with that, or maybe if you're a heavier set guy, all that weight is going to be supported by this base. Okay? And I'm going to show you a comparison. So we have this shoe. And then we bring the Kyrie 7, which is a shoe I love the plan. Just look at that. It goes straight from this area all the way down to the front of the shoe. No cutouts along this area. Plus if we turn the shoe around, real thick bumper right here. So that's going to support you for those fast stops and goes, that quick change of direction. This right here definitely going to help you break and pivot and push off. We turn around also. Nothing that's going like this, like the GT Cut 2. And the base is pretty wide. But again, this is not a jumping shoe. Now we compare a jumping shoe. We get the Zion 2, which is one of the newer shoes. Just look at that. Look at that base. It might be narrow along this area right here. But then it immediately starts getting wider right there. And you're going to want that especially because when you're landing, you're not going to want to have to worry about how you're landing, right? You just don't want to think about it. Let me bring the other one so you can compare it. Look how narrow that is. Now look at this one. right even the Kyrie Kyrie 7 look at that along this area see that very narrow okay so there are going to be advantages to shoes like these right here because in this type of shoe you have to be very precise know what you're doing you have to have good balance but in a shoe like this, like the Zion 2, the Kyrie 7, you can go and play really reckless. You don't have to think about where you're going to be landing, how you're going to be pushing off, because you do have a lot of extra material that is going to aid in your play style. So that's something I wanted everybody to be aware of. Not just that, but if we take a look at the side right here of this shoe, you can see that it's very curved. And this is called toe spring especially for runners a lot of running shoes have toe spring in them because it kind of allows you to do this rocker step okay so what's the advantage of having that that your takeoffs can be faster especially from being at a standstill position right and then you have this rocker step to aid you on a quick takeoff not just that but your strides it helps them be a little bit more smoother because the idea of a running shoe is you're going to be running forward and you want those smooth transitions. You don't want to be worrying about if you're going to be cutting left or right doing movements like that. So that's why this shoe has that type of technology. Now we take a look at the Zion 2 shoe. We can see that it doesn't have like a rocker step on there, right? Not as much. It has a little bit, but it's not going to be curved like this one. Look, look how curved that is. Right? Because Zion's not that type of player. 
when he's coming down the court. He does move real fast, has a lot of power, but again, he uses his body, kind of get past you and all that strength. And then definitely, he wants something to land on, so this shoe has that. Compare it with the Kyrie 7. Again, look, it's not as curved as the Cut 2. And it does have a big bumper along the side that we talked about earlier. And Kyrie's going to want that, definitely, because, you know, he can stop and go. He wants to push off and go in a different direction. So this shoe has that. And this shoe is somewhat flexible. Right? The Zion 2. See, this one's less flexible. I already knew that was going to happen because Zion, again, he's not that type of player. He's not a shifty type player. More a player that has power and he's structure. A shoe that can maintain and hold his power so he can use it appropriately. So this shoe right here has a lot of structure. Doesn't flex or bend as much as this one right now the GT cut see you already feel that it bends a little bit more I'm not gonna say there's a big difference between these two how they bend but this one does have a little bit more four foot flex because of the materials and not just that because definitely on a shoe that has the spring toe technology into it they do tend to bend more I was reading different reports and because they just work together so that's something to have in mind a shoe that is um very similar to this one that I also have that I love playing in is going to be the Kawhi 2 why I say it's very similar because if we look at the bottom it has more of a narrow base you can compare it See that? Somewhat similar. It does have a little bit of cut inward. Okay. And also, it's not too wide in the front at all. Okay. It's not too wide right here in the forefoot. And the materials are somewhat similar. You can see the traction. It's going to have this translucent in the front. This one has some as well. Then it's going to have some in the back. Then the for this shoe, the middle is going to be this harder material, this harder rubber, this more grippier rubber. And for the cut two, it's going to be in the front. So in a way, they kind of function somewhat similar, and the layout of the shoe is somewhat similar. And I'm going to say, in a shoe like this compared to like the Kyrie 7, right? You definitely have to be aware that you're dusting the dust off the shoes because of the translucent. Because if you don't, it does make it so you're a little bit maybe unbalanced and you can slip. I have slipped a little bit here and there. Not too much because I try to stay on top of that. So you're going to have to do that in this shoe. Don't forget to do that on the GT Cut 2. Also because it is more narrow, right? You do have to be more precise in this shoe. When I play in this shoe, every now and then maybe I might find that I might be slightly bit off balance right or I make a stop and my foot might maybe want to turn over a little bit and that's because of those issues because it's more narrow there's less material on the outside this shoe doesn't have a wide bumper like this one right here okay same thing with this shoe this shoe is going to have that smear traction crawling up the style of the shoe but it doesn't have a wide bumper so you're not going to get that detail when you're playing in this shoe so with that covered so now it brings us to this question. Why is this shoe called the Nike Air Zoom GT Cut 2? One of the reasons for it is because in this shoe we talked about the rocker step and the toe spring. That's going to allow you to go from point A to point B real fast. Especially from the standstill position. So you're going to be able to make those cuts really good. It's going to give you a slight advantage. And a player that does it really well we all know is Steph Curry. And a lot of his shoes have this technology in the front. They kind of look a little bit like running shoes because of the curve but that guy's skill set is very good he'll be behind the player use him as a screen and then just cut across catch the ball and shoot so it's something that you like to do this shoe is going to work out very well now the other type of cut that maybe people will assume with this type of shoe why it's called the cut because if you're already on the go and then you do a cut in a different direction or you're doing different moves and you want to change in a different direction doing a cut this shoe maybe is not going to be the best shoe out there because we talked about those details again. You don't have that thick bumper to help you, assist you, the brake. 
and to be able to push off. So it's just important knowing the difference. But that doesn't mean that you can be that type of player because this shoot just requires more position, requires you to have better stability and real great footwork. So if you're an advanced player and you have that in your bag, this shoe is just going to be something that's going to aid you being faster, right? From point A to point B on the standstill. And then you can still cross somebody up. So there you have it. And hopefully you were able to understand the concepts I was trying to explain. Now, a little overview. This shoe is going to be very good for point guards or some shooting guards. We can even extend it to some power forwards and the centers. Because if you're a player that has good balance and real good footwork, you understand what you're trying to do, where you're planting your foot, you're not going to have any problems with this shoe. Also, if you're a lighter type player, I mean, this shoe is going to be able to support your weight because we did mention that this shoe is narrow. So definitely, if you're more of a heavier set guy, think about if you're going to like having a base that's more narrow because that can really affect how you play or maybe even make you fall a couple times. Plus, I did want to mention, if you are a new player and you're learning the game of basketball, which is a beautiful game to learn, this shoe probably not going to be appropriate for you because we talked about you're going to need to be precise in this shoe. So if you're making mistakes with your footwork or you're unbalanced already on like, let's say a fadeaway, right? This shoe isn't going to help you out. It's in fact going to make it the opposite. It's going to make it harder for you. So make sure you find a shoe that has a wide enough base that's going to help you out learn the game. Or simply if you're a player that's trying to learn how to dunk, right? you're going to need that extra space at the bottom for your landies and this shoe is narrow so you don't want to fall down and hurt yourself so that's going to be the take home message think about it this shoe is going to fit your play style and having all that in mind this shoe is still going to have a lot of good things going for it it's going to be very plush like we mentioned the materials are going to be very breathable and light also the lockdown system i thought they were very good not to mention the traction is going to be good for indoors and outdoors. Plus, you get a lot of cushioning. You get the Cushlon missile we talked about and the drop-in react as well. So this shoe is going to have a lot of good things going for it. And the price tag is going to be 170 USD. Hopefully you were able to learn something from this video that's going to help you out. And like always, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.